Hello, friends, and welcome to An Idol Called Food. In today's podcast episode, we're going to be speaking about creating solid goals for 2024. This podcast episode is sponsored by the EYB planfuel.com EYB planfuel.com supplements that allow you to show up as the best version of yourself. Without further ado, we're going to jump right into it because we have a lot to cover today. As you already know, goals are a popular subject at the beginning of the year. We see a lot of people creating smart goals. We see some people uh, hiring coaches. The topic about goals is huge. And the reason for that is because everyone is creating their new year's resolution. There is this syndrome, as I like to call it, and I call it the Monday syndrome. And before I actually give you some nuggets and I give you some ideas on what I believe can be solid goals for 2024, I want to chat with you about some of the pitfalls because I think they're important. I think most people fail to think of the things that get in the way and the reason why the vast majority of New Year's resolutions fall flat and by mid-February, everyone has forgotten their lofty goals and they're on to default to their normal settings, which is just to do what they did the year before. And nothing can be worse than being in the same place you were last year, even if last year was amazing. And the reason for that is I believe that whatever is not growing is dying. We need to grow on a consistent basis in our mind, our body, our spirit, our career goals, our marriage goals, our parenting goals. We got to get better. We got to get better. Otherwise, life gets stagnant. Life gets boring. And I believe that one of the things that can be the most motivating for humans is moving forward, progressing, growing, learning. And so that's what this episode is about. I want to First of all, speak to you about some of those pitfalls so you can avoid them and you can move forward and actually have an amazing year in where you plan maybe one, two, or three goals, but you achieve them. And by the time the end of the year comes around, you have actually dialed in those particular goals in such a way that those goals that you accomplish will allow you to even create better, bigger goals next year. So let's jump into it. And I think that one of the biggest pitfalls when it comes to goals is that people have a tendency to think of this thing they want. Okay. So let's call that weight loss. I am going to lose 30 pounds this year, period. That's where the goal planning stops. Some of you guys take a little further and you actually take out a piece of paper and you write it down. The problem is you write this goal down. You sometimes even go as far as creating a a specific date and when you want to create, you know, when you want to achieve these goals, but that's it. That's as far as it gets. And then you just kind of go on and then you, February, March, April, May, June go by and you're like, oh my God, I haven't achieved my goal yet. And you're frustrated. The reason for that is because your brain, right, can see the goal, but you have absolutely no plans, no, no GPS to get there. You haven't created a strategy. I reference James Clear a lot because I think James Clear is probably one of the greatest personal development teachers of today. If you don't know who James Clear is, James Clear is the author of Atomic Habits. And the reason I say he's probably one of the best personal development teachers, he probably wouldn't like that title, is because he says that we should actually focus on the activities versus the goal. We should actually think of, okay, here's what I want, right? But then here are every single one of the strategies that need to be executed on a daily basis in order to make sure that the goal is taken care of. In other words, hyper focus on the goal, right? Sorry, hyper focus on the activities, not the goal. Hyper focus on the activities, not the goal. So oftentimes I get uh, people that'll reach out to me and say, oh, you know, I weighed in this week and I, I didn't lose any weight, but then I'll go back and I'll check and I'll say, well, Did you do your cardio? Yeah, I got my three cardios in 60 minutes on an empty stomach. Did you get all your meals? And yeah, I hit every single one of my meals and I hit all my times. And that's why I'm so frustrated. I did everything you told me to do. And yet the scale didn't move. Well, if you've been in the weight loss uh, and a weight loss journey before, you understand that weight is not the most accurate metric and it can be very, very fidgety, right? And so even though some people are actually executing on every single one of the habits, sometimes the weight just doesn't budge and that's okay. And so when I hear that, I get excited because I know that the following week they're going to lose weight because if you're executing on your habits, that's going to take care of the goal. And that is true for every other 
goal that we have out there. So my goal for you this year, my encouragement to you is to actually think of the thing that you want. Okay. So let's say it's weight loss, right? I want to lose weight. But then on top of that, you have another career goal, which is this year I want to get promoted or I want to scale my business. Or maybe it's a marriage goal. This year, I'm truly going to date my spouse, right? I'm going to make sure that I create a date. I create, um, you know, uh, I give her gifts again. I compliment her. I'm just going to make sure I date her again, right? And these are three goals that are very similar in different realms. So maybe what we can do is we can find one word, a theme word over all of those things. What would that theme word be? Maybe it's thrive. Maybe it's scale. Maybe it's soar because that one theme word covers all of the other things that you're looking to do. Here's why this is important. Because when you actually have a theme name, right? You sort, you're sort of empowered by the idea of soaring, of thriving, right? And then every single aspect of your life that doesn't align with soaring, thriving, scaling, you can just chuck out, right? Let me give you an example. Maybe you're sitting on the couch and it's one of those days where you're boring, you're bored and you're tired and you just don't want to do anything. You don't want to get out of the couch, but then your theme word for that year is scale, thrive, uh, uh, you know, um, do great, whatever that theme word is, right? And you're sitting there and you're not embodying that particular word. I don't know about you. Maybe this doesn't do it for you, but it does it for me. And it jolts me out of my couch, out of the seat, wherever it is I'm sitting. And it makes me embody that particular theme word. So picking a theme word over two or three of the particular big goals that you have is important. Secondly, once you identify every one of those goals, right? The subcategories should be actual strategies, habits, and something directional. Okay. So if you're going to lose weight, you have to think, what are the three or five activities that I have to do on a daily basis that are actually going to get me closer to my weight loss? What are the five or seven activities that are going to get me closer to getting a promotion or scaling my business? What are the three or five things that I need to do to date my wife again? And you actually categorize every single one of them. Okay. We're going to go a step further now. Step further is we actually create alarms. Okay. So if it's cardio, I'm going to commit Monday, Wednesday, Friday to my cardio. If it's my business, then I'm going to commit to prospecting three, four, five times a week. If it's dating my wife, I need to find a specific date on where I'm actually going to invite her for a date, rain or shine. I don't care how busy you are. It's going to happen, right? So you schedule it, you put it and you set an, set alarm, an alarm to it. Let's take it a step further. Once you've actually taken the time to do all those things, you find an accountability partner. That's right. You want to find someone who you respect, who you trust, who you like, and who you know is not going to play around and is going to hold you accountable to your commitments. Okay. You need a sort of a coach in each and every one of these areas, ideally a paid coach, because when we pay, we pay attention. So we need someone to really push us. We need some skin in the game. You know, we need to pay for these things so that we can actually take action and get things done. So a lot of components here that are important. You need a theme name. You need the specific things that you want to do. You need the habits that are actually going to make sure that you execute on every single one of these things that you're aiming for. You need to schedule things in, in alarms. You need to set dates for specific things. And then, of course, you need to find a coach, a person that's going to hold you accountable. All those things are super, super important. I want to give you one last thing that I think is really important in terms of creating solid goals for 2024. I think that if you do all of those things, that's amazing. That's a great start. But then these goals need to be in front of you every single day. So I don't know if you are a reader, if you're a person that spends a lot of time in front of the mirror, if you're a person that spends a lot of time in one particular place, something that you visit every day, what you want to do is you actually want to take a little piece of paper and where you write your goals, your habits, and all these things that you're trying to embody, your theme name, all these things, right? And you want to have it in a place where you're constantly seeing it because you know the saying, out of sight, out of mind, the opposite is also true of that. So one of my favorite strategies for writing my goals and looking at them every day is that I'm a reader. So I get up every single day, seven days a week at the same time, and I read for about two hours. And instead of having a chapter holder or one of these little um, things that you put in between your book to know where you are in the book, I actually set my goal paper in there. 
right? And before or after I get done reading, I run through that list every single time. And because I'm a person of faith, I'm praying over every single one of those points that I want to achieve. This is super powerful because it keeps things alive. It keeps things in front of you. And it's one of the fastest ways to activate your reticular activating system, right? That part of your brain that reminds you of things you've seen, you've heard, or you've experienced. It brings things to the forefront because prior to that, you're deleting, distorting, and generalizing ideas. So if you don't have it in front of you, right, you're going to delete, you're going to distort, and you're going to generalize, and things are going to pass you by, and day after day after day, you're going to skip. And if you have a series of days where you actually skip the things that you know you should be doing, that creates the opposite of momentum right? <laughs> that creates this sort of rejective mode and where you're just like, ah, I'm not going to get this done. Ah, it's not that important. But the opposite of that is true. If you actually start making progress, right, then what actually happens is uh, you, you, you get enthusiastic, right? The word enthusiastic in the original language means to be possessed by a spirit of enthusiasm, right? I don't know about you. I'm not too happy with being possessed by anything. But if if, if I'm going to be possessed by something, it's by a spirit of enthusiasm, of motivation, of inspiration, of moving forward, of doing better. And if, if that's the case, then fine, I'll be possessed by that. Lastly, I want to say this, right? I want to say that we get so excited about goals, but we spend very little time actually creating those goals. Abraham Lincoln said a very famous quote, and he, and he said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four hours sharpening the ax. He's talking about preparation. He's talking about sitting down and actually writing things and studying things and accounting for your project before you actually launch it. So maybe you haven't done this yet. Maybe you have, if you, if you have, congratulations. If you haven't, I would say pick one day this week where maybe you can take the day off or maybe half of the day and really sit down with yourself, be introspective, think about where you're going, what you want to achieve and do all of these steps that I just mentioned. And I believe that you will be incredibly successful in 2024. You'll create solid goals that will fill you with excitement and joy. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast episode about creating solid goals for 2024. My name is JT Tapius with an idol called food. More importantly, I hope you put these things to action and I hope you have an amazing year and that the Lord will bless you and move you forward in an empowering way. I'll talk to you guys soon. Ciao, ciao.